The mayor opts to send his kids to private school rather than enroll them in the Chicago public school system. A parent's decision to be sure. Though it's fair to ask what this says about our school system and also an early curfew for kids is one step closer to reality. And by the way, one of our guests has his sight set on a new job in the next election. We're going to take a look at all of these issues and other issues facing the city council. Welcome to Politics Tonight. I'm WGN-TV political analyst Paul Lisnick, and this is our nightly look at politics around our city, state, and nation. Tonight, my guests are Alderman Amea Pawar from the 47th Ward and Alderman Ricardo Munoz from the 22nd Ward. My guests will join me in just a moment. We always want your comments and questions. I'm sure we'll get them tonight. Our phone lines are open at 877-358-CLTV. That's 877 358 2588 or if you prefer Facebook that's fine facebook.com slash politics tonight we've already got several comments from viewers already remember we're streaming live at WGNTV.com and CLTV.com so let your friends who live elsewhere on the planet know that they too can get politics tonight but first here's what's happening in politics tonight President Obama and House Speaker John Boehner continue to work on a deal that would allow for an increase in the debt ceiling but both sides deny that a deal is imminent Aides say that the deal would amount to as much as $3 trillion in spending cuts. They've got until August 2nd to reach that deal. Otherwise, the country could default on its debt. Federal Election Commission ruled today that John Edwards' 2008 presidential campaign must repay $2.3 million in federal campaign funds. An audit found that the Edwards campaign received more than it should have because of accounting errors. At the end of June, Edwards had $2.6 million in his campaign fund, so paying back the FEC would essentially deplete that campaign coffer. Governor Quinn is in Israel this week. Today, he attended a signing ceremony for an exchange program between a university in Israel and the University of Illinois at Chicago. The agreement will promote faculty and student exchanges and joint research projects. The visit was paid for by the Jewish United Fund of Metropolitan Chicago. Children under 12 would have to be inside by 8.30 p.m. Sunday through Thursday under a new curfew proposal that was endorsed by City Council Public Safety Committee today. There are several exceptions in the ordinance, such as if a parent is with a child or if the child is playing outside in their own yard. The new curfew time is expected to be passed at the full City Council meeting next week. Mayor Rahm Emanuel and his wife Amy have decided to forego a Chicago public school and instead will send their children to the University of Chicago Lab School, Hyde Park. That's the same school that President Obama's daughters, Sasha and Malia, went to when they lived in Chicago. Emanuel maintains that where he sends his children to school is a personal decision and one and he and, that he and his wife Amy made privately. All right, our number if you wish to weigh in on that topic or any of the other topics we talk about tonight, 877-358-2588. Let me introduce my guests to you. They are both members of City Council, and they have a lot to say about all that's going on in City Council, and I've got lots of questions to ask them. First of all, joining me here in the newsroom is Alderman Ricardo Munoz, Alderman for the 22nd Ward, and uh, he has some other news we're going to be talking about tonight, perhaps for the next election time. We'll let him tell you about that. And joining us also here at WGN Studios, uh, Alderman Amea Pol of the 47th Ward. Uh, he's been with us ever since uh, he was a candidate, and, uh, and he's still here as alderman. Welcome back, and welcome to both of you. Thank you for having us. All Thank right, let, let's start with the, uh, the decision of the Emanuels to send their kids to private school. And let me say right up front, um, that's their decision. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, so I don't want to get into, you know, does he have to send his kids to Chicago Public School when he's the mayor? I mean, a parent has a constitutional right to send their kids to whatever school they want to send to and educate them as they choose to. The question for me, the political question that it raises, and I'll ask you as my guests, is um, number one, when the mayor's number one priority is our education system, what message is it sending about our system? And then number two, of course, does the media have a right to ask? We'll be talking in a bit about uh, the mayor's response to one reporter who uh, got him a bit angry about asking on the question. We'll talk about that. But first, Alderman Munoz, let me come to you. Um, you know, what does it say about the school system? Well, first and foremost, I think it's, it's, it's a distraction. I mean, the mayor has the full authority and full right as a parent to do what he feels is best for his children. And I think what we need to focus on is how are we reducing class size? How are we increasing the class day? How are we making sure that we have the appropriate number of teacher assistants in every classroom so that we are actually teaching analytical thinking uh, in, in, in the classroom and not just teaching to the test? So uh, this whole conversation about whether or not the mayor and, you know, 
know, S S Superintendent Brizard decide where, to, where their children are going to be attending, I think is a distraction of the real issue is how do we pay for quality public education for everyone? Um, okay, fair enough. And uh, Alderman Pawar, your, your take on that. Again, we're not questioning whether the mayor has a right to send his kids to any school he wants. Uh, but And by the way, some, I think, there might even be less question if he had sent them to a religious school. Uh, some people go to religious school, and there's certainly those opportunities here. But a private school, and some, by the way, have said to me, and down on the south side of the city, not even in the north side where he lives. What's your take on all that? I mean, I, I, I would just echo Alderman Munoz's statement, which is, you know, people have uh, the ability and the right to send their kids where they want to send them. But I think what's most important to recognize here is come to the 47th Ward, you've got parents that are leaving once their kids get seventh grade age, and that's because there aren't um, real high school options for a lot of parents in my ward. And I think what you're seeing is a lot of parents are either, A, staying in, in the city up to a certain point and then leaving, or sending their kids to private school. I think what we have is a larger structural reason. Look at the uh, demographic makeup of CPS. Uh, and look at how many people and how many parents aren't sending their kids to CPS. That's probably more telling and probably a better conversation to have. By the way, Alderman Poir, let me stay with you on that because I know you want to talk about the use of some TIF money for a school project. Let's turn this into a positive discussion about uh, schools, by the way. Uh, what's going on in the 47th Ward with this uh, TIF fund? Well, one of the things that we haven't done in the city of Chicago is sort of talk about what good schools do for community and how they build community, what they do um, in terms of an economic impact on property values, on, on a thriving business environment. Schools, when schools do well, everyone does well. And what I'm trying to do is take TIF money um, that exists in the 47th Ward and enhance the schools that I have academically so I can draw new families in and keep them here from K through 12 and, and sort of make sure the population is diverse because it's, you know, whether you have kids or not, when good schools um, are performing at high levels, everyone wins and there's an economic benefit for all. All right. I do want to, as I said, the other issue that gets raised for me here is whether or not the press has a right to ask these questions, even though they're private, uh, private decisions. Um, uh, uh, this video has kind of gone, gone viral, this uh, uh, interaction between the mayor and uh, Marion Ahern of Channel 5. We've got just a piece of that that we're going to show you a little bit. I want to get your comments of it. So let's go ahead and run that. Are we going to run that? Okay. We, we are going to run that. I promise. I'm making this decision as a father, and that's a decision we're going to make, and anything less than that would be less than how, how I think of myself and want to be as a father. All right, so, uh, you know. Oh, thank you. That is from WMAQ-TV, by the way, that clip, and uh, it, it does go on. I mean, it gets a little uh, uh, <laughs> less than friendly between Marianne Ahern and, and the mayor as he says, look, I've got a right to do what I want, and, and uh, he gets angry that she even raised the question. Alderman Munoz, does the press have the right to raise the issue, or is it so personal it doesn't belong in the public discussion? The press has the right to raise the issue of his decision and, uh, and how, he's, how he does that, but he has the, the right and the authority as a parent to basically tell you, look, it's a private matter. And so uh, that's where it should end. Uh, I, I don't know exactly. I haven't seen the entire clip uh, uh, just yet tonight, uh, but the press does have the right to ask. But then he also has the, the right to basically say, you know, in this case, it's a personal issue, none of your business. Alderman Pawar, he does go on in that clip. Uh, we, we see some footage where he basically says to uh, Ms. Ahern, you know, be, uh, that's, that's really what I'm going to talk about because you asked that question. Very angry that it got asked. Uh, again, you handle the press. Let me ask you when the press talks to you, do you, you know, do you want to say you have no right to go somewhere? Or do you think as a public figure you just got to deal with whatever question comes at you? I mean, I think we as elected officials, as public figures, have the, um, we understand that you're going to ask whatever you want to ask. But I think people should respect um, when we say that uh, things are cer certain things are private, certain things are private matters. And, you know, we are, um, while we give up a big portion of our lives to public service and we give up our privacy, um, we haven't given up our entire life, and I think people should respect that. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll take your phone calls. If you want to chime in on this issue at 877-358-2588, we'll talk about the new, new curfew that looks like it's come into play. And Alderman Munoz wants to tell us about potentially a new job he is after. We're going to find out about that when we return to Politics Tonight, only on CLTV. Welcome back to Politics Tonight. I'm WGN-TV political analyst Paul Lisnick. I'm visiting with two aldermen from the City Council who are here discussing a variety of issues tonight here in the newsroom. Uh, alderman Ricardo Munoz of the 22nd Ward and joining us also here at WGN, 
Alderman Amea Pawar of the 47th Ward. Uh, I'm going to move on to other topics. There is a Facebook comment I want to share with you. It comes from Melissa who says, uh, in brief, one of the issues about this whole where does the mayor send his uh, kids to school thing, uh, you know, what about security? Uh, isn't that an issue? So let me just, uh, Alderman Munoz, any sense about that? If the mayor's kids go to a public school versus a private school, is security a, a, a more of an issue in one than the other? I mean, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be at any school for any student. That's what I'm saying. Well, that's why I said earlier that this is a distraction. We need to make every school safe. We need to make sure it's the safe school for every student, not just the VIPs. And in this case, what we're talking about is basically uh, him opting, uh, him and his wife opting out of the public school system to send them to a private school. That's fully within their right. All right. Alderman Poir, let me talk about this new, uh, getting closer to passage now. It's out of committee, this new curfew that would take effect for kids having to be in by 8.30 Sunday through Thursday unless they're with a parent and unless they're on their own property, as I understand it. Um, and we've discussed this issue before uh, on the show. Uh, and, but let me ask you, you know, some people say, you know, this is, you know, there are people who say keep the government out of my life. Uh, this is an issue of parenting. Why does the city council have any right to tell me when my kid should be off the street? What's your thought about that? Well, I mean, I think any time kids are out after a certain time, nothing good happens. I remember growing up, my mom used to tell me, you know, if you're out past midnight, nothing good happens after midnight. And I think for younger kids, it's the same thing. Uh, we need parents to be actively involved in keeping our streets safe. We all have a responsibility in preventing crime. And I think this is one way to hold parents accountable. And I think, secondly, it also just makes the streets safer. I mean, I don't think we should blow it up uh, or make it what, it what it isn't. It's just simply about keeping our streets safer. But do they, but Alderman, do you agree, Alderman Poir, that, that, I mean, should the city, I mean, I agree, it's hard to disagree with everything you're saying, but, but should city council be stepping into this world, or is this a parent's responsibility? You know, I think in some cases, it, this is ultimately a parent's responsibility, and I don't think this is really about enforcement. It's really just about um, figuring out a way to get parents involved. Um, and to the extent that they aren't, uh, you know, we, there's a, a mechanism to get the kids inside. And, you know, we could talk about whether this is big government or not, uh, at the end of the day, as, as aldermen, we're sort of the first responders the community needs, and we see a need, and we act it, and we're going to act on it. Alderman Munoz, your thoughts about uh, city council stepping into the world that some would say is personal private business? I mean, we, we have a state law that requires people to wear a seatbelt, and, uh, and, and it wasn't until the enforcement of the seatbelt law went into effect that people started wearing the seatbelts when we know p it's parents' responsibilities to make sure that children should be in car seats and uh, in seatbelts, but still we needed a law, <clears throat> we needed a law to, to do that. In this case, we find f where families are, d disintegrating families are allowing young men and women, uh, preteens, 11, 10, 12-year-olds uh, to be out on the street uh, late into the night and what we're saying here is look we're going to use every means necessary to make our safe safe make our city safer for everyone uh, okay and by the way alderman uh, Munez uh, the, the uh, mayor has announced some redeployment of, of police forces in different wards are you happy with the way that's happening are our wards getting attention that need attention we know that with a lot of the crime that's happened on the north side of the city, all of a sudden, you know, there's more attention than there sometimes seems to be on the south well, side. Some would say that's not th fair. Th that's part of the challenge is that be because we're short staffed right now, we're at about a 900 vacant uh, level position where of the 13,000 police officers we're supposed to have, there's 900 vacancies. And that's why uh, we've been encouraging and urging the mayor to hire, to bring into the academy those classes so we can fill those vacancies so that we don't, we're not short staffed. Uh, right now we're 900 short, so that means that officers need to be moved around. What we need to be able to sh say is that we're fully staffed and, f and, and with the police department uh, at full capacity so that we're able to then prevent the crime and not just react to it. All right, before we take a break, Alderman Poir, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I agree with Alderman Munoz, but I think we also, what we need to do is understand that public safety is about community well-being. And in order yes. to improve the well-being of a community, what we need to do is make sure that things like graffiti busters or, or uh, forestry, some of the little things that add up to public safety, social service providers have what the, the tools that they need, that every city service is connected. And it's not just about making sure we have enough police, but it's that plus all the other city services are properly funded. All right. Uh, we're going to take Correct. a break. When we come back, we'll take your calls at 877-358-2588. In addition, we're going to talk uh, with uh, Alderman Munoz. He potentially wants a new job. We'll let you know what that is when we return to Politics Tonight, only on CLTV. Stay with us.